And now, please welcome Colin McLaurin. Uh, it's uh, basically, psychologists have said this, that uh, when you're absorbed in some sort of activity or work and you're just really focused and concentrated, it's actually a, a form of happiness, if I can use the word happiness very broadly. It's a state where you feel great. You're just loving it. You're so absorbed and dedicated and passionate into this activity that you're focused on. So you could wake up feeling sad and then do some work and feel great. Some of the things that characterize it are, uh, it's, uh, yeah, actually, so let me go, let me go back a step. Um, Michelangelo, for instance, when he was painting the Sistine Chapel, if you've been there, it's an incredible work of art about God and angels and demons and human life and all these things. They say that he would paint for days without sleeping, without eating, to the point where he would actually pass out. He was just so intensely consumed with doing this activity, up there really high, lying on the scaffolding, wherever it was, painting away on the ceiling. Um, so you could say he was in a, in a sort of flow state. Basically, it's characterized by a few things. One of them is the activity, which is challenging. So you're not bored, you actually find it a challenge, or difficult even but you're also confident or you're good at it. So you've got high ability or at least high confidence and a difficult challenge, and you sort of need qualities like this to help to get into the flow state. And it's not something they say that you can be in that much of the time. It's only a small proportion of the actual time you can be in that state. But if you can get into it, it's, uh, it's exhilarating, as I'm sure many people have experienced that in whatever forms of work they do. You know, um, as Christians, of course, we would have a unique perspective on this. Uh, like, like the many people in the world that want to be moral and, and do good things, obviously we would only encourage you to try to get into a flow state in a work that's actually morally good and productive. So um, I'm sure there's exceptions, but maybe if you're you know, leading up some dubious kind of enterprise, then maybe you know, I'm not hoping that you'll get into a flow state and be super productive at causing harm in the world. So obviously, people from a moral background would want to be in a flow state, something they value, be it playing an instrument or be it um, working for God in some sense or, or in their day-to-day -day job that is providing for their family, whatever it is. Hopefully, it's something that's morally a, a good thing that you're getting to flow for. But uh, as Christians particularly, there's the area of witness, like things we do for God. And I do want to emphasize it's not just about what we do. It's also, I think, about just being God or who we are. Um, I think Ellie might clarify that soon, uh, or topics like that about the fragrance of Christ. But uh, as Christians, work we do for God, maybe we can get into a flow state with that as well. But in the very least, you can look at the lives of people like Paul and Jesus, that things were hard for them a lot of the time. Paul was shipwrecked multiple times, beaten, stoned, flogged, went through all these hardships, and yet he was so driven and he kept going in serving God in ministry. Flow state or not, he was very committed to that work. Jesus, of course, things weren't always comfortable for him. He said, birds have nests, foxes have holes, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Uh, it was a challenge for Jesus, and yet he, he kept going with the work that the Father had to do for him. To help you understand God's Word in a whole new way, go to goodnewsunlimited.com. You can sign up there to get your free devotional delivered fresh to you each day.